when you roll up to a pool where Salva, Steve Olson, Dwayne Peters are skating, they're not like, go ahead, bro. Oh, <laughs> you got this. Did that change at some point? Like not with them. <laughs> My name is Steve Alba. Most people call me Salba. I've been, I'm actually 60 now, so that means I've been skiing for 50 years now. That being said, no, I'm not your average 60 year old <laughs> by any means. My first memory of Salba is seeing him in, in Skateboarder Mag. When I saw photos of him, he was skating these gigantic bulls. Like that looked like such a different level of what I was trying to do that I just thought I'll never, I'll never get there, but I'm gonna try my best. Well, my first encounter with him was at his house because my girlfriend was dating Mickey. Of course, when he saw me, I had red Converse on. He goes, what do you wear Converse for? You don't skate, you know, he's just being a real jerk. My first meeting with Salvo was at the skate park and at Montclair High. But that's not it. Nice to have him on my wall. <laughs> I think one of the first time I went over to Selva's house, I'm a kid, and I go over there with my girlfriend, and we're hanging out in the front yard. Like, we talked, and he was always cool. You know, he was like the older dude. And, but uh, I remember calling the house. I was yeah. calling your house, because Vince lived there. Yeah. And I was all, oh, your, your brother stole my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and Selva's like, yeah, bro, that really sucks, bud. Yeah, I know, I know how that goes, man. I'm sorry. And, driving like 85 on the freeway like four days ago and I see a CHP cop blazing to come get me and I'm all shit here I go I'm gonna take it he comes up to me just looks, looks at me and kind of just goes hey man just slow it down and just drove off I look like a grandpa little <laughs> little do they know you know what I mean what's the bad limits? it's the area between the 15 freeway and the 57 freeway and the 210 freeway in the 60 area. This is Rancho Cucamonga. I grew up in Montclair. I've been flying up lots of houses lately. So I stick these out and talk to people. And out of the 12 houses last week, I got four calls back. And two dudes said, hey, man, you come actually skate. We're going to give you permission. You're good. Because they knew who I was. Well, I originally started skating with my buddy, Baba Zone. I had saw a skateboard before, but he was a friend that I had access to the skateboard because he would let me borrow it sometimes or let us use it. We had like a little group of little dudes that we hung out with, you know what I mean? And then we all just started all skateboarding. What year was that? Oh God, it was probably 74. Started skating in front of his house at first, just trying to like get the bounce to kind of go down the street. I don't know, I'm thinking like six, nine months after doing all that. And then we started kind of skate, skating banks. And then it was, it was one day, it was like four of the five of the older guys. And at this point, we're like maybe fifth grade. We watched them going down this alley. And like about four houses in, they jumped over the fence. And so we kind of like, we were hiding in the bushes a little bit so they wouldn't see us. We couldn't see them, but we could hear like. And we waited for them to leave. And then we jumped the fence and we go, oh, they're right up pool, what? How are they doing that? <laughs> Ever since that day, I was just hooked on pool. That's, that's all I wanted to do forever. When I was growing up in the 70s, the way I looked at it, where I was from, I had three choices. I could be the surfer wannabe kid, the game banger kid, or the jock kid. I was kind of the jock kid, but my dad was the president of Little League, and he was a good baseball player himself. I get all my athleticism from my dad, for the, but my mom was very athletic too, because she was a, gymnast, a gymnastic lady. He chose to be a punk, but he could have been a jock. He could have been all of that stuff. Mom and dad weren't stoked on it. I was still doing the other stuff, but I was doing skateboarding at the same time. And even when I won Spring Valley, I was still playing football and baseball. And when I was on a team, I would get frustrated because some of the other kids weren't as good as me. And then when I started skateboarding, I didn't have to worry about any of those other people dragging me down. First knowledge of Salva was winning Spring Valley contest. Everyone was like, 
Dude, is that Tony Alba's brother? They spelled his name wrong? People have been talking shit on me for fucking 50 fucking years. You didn't deserve to win that fucking contest. You weren't good enough. You weren't as good as those guys. Which, yeah, okay, sure, maybe you're right. But I had a plan. Spring Valley was the, um, the first official professional um, pool contest. He technically won it because he understood the rules. And all that was in that contest, for two minutes, you had to just go on every wall. All that stuff is nonsense, he won. There were plenty of people that could do tricks, but a lot of them just looked like they were gonna die at any minute, which made it more exciting. But Steve Alba did not look like that. Steve Alba looked like he had absolute confidence. When you roll up to a pool where Salva, Steve Olson, Dwayne Peters are skating, they're not like, go ahead, bro. <laughs> you got this. Did that change at some point? Not with them. <laughs> Back in the day, he wasn't welcoming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Julie will come in and say, oh my God, shut your fucking mouth. Yep. She'll just come in and just ream him. I'm the only person that can um, understand him, and I can tell him what to do. This was a school report on skateboarding I did, I'm pretty sure in 1979. I must have been in fifth grade. They said, oh, you want you to do a report on, on whatever subject you choose. Of course, I'm gonna choose skateboarding. This is the roots of skateboarding. The illustration on the cover is a guy doing a front set air. And as far as I'm concerned, that's Steve Alba, because he did the best ones. <laughs> this is a pretty good one. Most riders reach the height of their skills from the ages of 11 to 20. <laughs> After the age of 20, most riders start losing their reputation. That was true back then. Oh, there was absolutely no idea that there would be any longevity in skateboarding at all. They started having amateur contests. So all the amateurs actually entered bowl contests or pool contests for about a year before the pros had a contest. So when they had a professional contest, Steve Alba, Steve Olson, all these guys that were actually the AMs that actually knew how to compete in bowl contests, took out the, the uh, existing pros pretty much at that contest, first try. Like every year was the changing of the guard, but we only thought we would have a year doing that too as well. Every time he pulls something out, uh, it's a story. You know, the shirt has a story, the skateboard has a story. These are old SKF bearings, like in the box. They used to come individually wrapped in packages like this. Oh yeah, here's a good one. Let's see. Here's me and Jesse at Baldy when Jesse's little. Jake calls me up and says, hey, I'm bringing guns down. We're gonna go skate pools with you and spend a weekend with you. So that was cool. That was, this is probably 2000. So they brought Grasso. He has Felper right there. We went to Fontana Skate Park also. Let's see. This, this pool right here is Central Pool. This, that's the that's first, first that's, that's the first pool I ever skated. Yeah. yeah. See, here's Julie in the background here. She used to go with us quite a bit in the old days, but she's kind of over it now. That's the one we couldn't see him, we could hear him. That's that pool. So Central Pool to me was was super, super special. When I was a kid, we rode it probably 74, 75, and they got filled in. And then we rode it again probably like uh, 87, 88, that's this time frame. And really early on, like, skated one pool and a cop came over and he was just like, Mr. Alba, you knew him. It's like, you guys gotta go. The whole backyard pool skating started with, with the Z-Boys, but Salba took it to a level where here is the protocol and here's how you find them. That's us going, getting ready to go up, go up and flying. And then actually when we went up that day, we found this pool from the air. And then we actually went to the ground and found it and skated it. Those guys will be flying here across the foothills taking pictures, <laughs> gridding out maps. Oh, there's a pool. Early 2000s, we went up with Alex and took a radio up one day and cell phones. We had three guys on the ground and I was kind of telling them where to go. And we found like fucking five, six pulls that day. And we got back on the ground, and we actually got to skate two of them that day, so it was super sick. So I've done airplanes, I've done helicopters with, with Dave Rule. And then nowadays we use satellites and we use drones. Oh, there he 
go out and get in the backyard. Oh, wow, dude, a stray, look at that. Amazing. Got a rat love seat, too. Wow. Those are all pools? Yeah. Going to find a thing is as fun as writing it. Seeing something new is as fun as writing it. I did my share of helping him clean him out and do all of that, but I'm over it now. I mean, dude, he would go into like some gnarly neighborhoods out in San Bernardino, <laughs> like bad, <laughs> bad areas. And it, dude, you can get fucked up. A street skater's gotta know what the area's cool and this, you should go in that area. It's the same thing with pool skaters, because eh? you're in the streets, you're in it. You're, you're in the thick of it. A lot of times I go look for pools, I take her with me. It's like, you just never know who you're gonna run into, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, gnarly situations. Hey, see here. See how the surface is all gnarly now? That gets down to this. When pools just sit in the elements, the plaster gets tweaked out. Like on a 10 scale, I'd probably give it like a, maybe a five, maybe even a four. It's just tight. I'm sure if someone's super gnarly, they can go with a love seat. There's always something to do in a pool. I, I think what it is too for me, like when you know you have a family and you're kind of by your own house and you've got this pool and you're having all the parties back there with the kids and it's like this American dream come true. So it's like we're coming to this wasteland of the American dream gone bad. And like what can we do to come in here to bring some more positivity back into this blight? We're bringing some kind of good positive vibe back to the house by putting some good energy back into it again. But a lot of people who, who bust us and the homeowners and the police and the neighbors don't really see it that way. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's that constant battle of trying to do what we do within the blight of the American dream gone bad. It is like detective work where you kind of, you know, you're trying to detect whether the people are home, what, what's the situation in the house, you know, whether you can barge, if it's, a, if it's a bust, if it's a permission, you know, what time they're home, what time they're not home. Basically, you're being a burglar, but you're not burglarizing. <laughs> Here, you know, plaster, which is this kind of shit like I like to collect for my, my, my little art projects. You know, like I take someone and put it in plastic bags and so I can make little shit out of it. As there was a sort of rise in popularity through the mid and late 80s, we were excited because, you know, we were young and all of a sudden we were making a living and, you know, skating took an, another downturn in the early 90s. But that's when the whole street revolution started. So I, I hate saying that skateboarding died, it just went through a reboot. Was there an era that Salvo wasn't a part of in skateboarding? In early 90s into like probably 92, it just transitioned skating kind of went away and street took over. Skateboarding was still pretty big going into early 90, 91. But after that, it, it really, trailed off quickly and just changed so much to where, you know, for somebody like Salba and everybody that was skating tra transition primarily, shit was different. A lot of people kind of dismissed me for a long time, especially in the 90s. You know, South Street and biggie baggy pants and 52 wheels and all that kind of shit. At that point, it was a tough time for anyone that was skating professionally from the prior eras where you're like, okay, hey, sponsors are like, I can no longer pay you. And so Salvo was in that boat too. And, and you know, Santa Cruz was trying to adapt and change to the new environment. And that was a tough period. It just changed so abruptly. There's only three or four guys, truthfully, that once their careers weren't at what people called the peak, that they stayed around and kept doing it. I can say with, with fair certainty that Steve Alba was never in skateboarding for fame or fortune. So when things waxed and waned, he just kept doing it. It, it might have been under the radar too, but we knew. It's just all the ups and downs of skating. It's like waves, you know, it's like life. I, I made it through that somehow, <laughs> you know what I mean? You almost see salvo as much with the guitar as you do a skateboard. 
His music allowed him to play off his celebrity a little bit too, but yeah, he's been playing guitar for as long as I've known him. Skating is cool and that's all good, but there's a little bit more than skating. You can use skating for this vehicle to kind of get into music and get into art. When he would go on dates with Julie, I would sneak into his room and play his guitar. <laughs> so that's how I kind of learned how to play guitar. He's the tech to the stars. He's worked for Prince and like yeah, Weezer and all yeah. these huge names. Oh yeah, now I'm a bass player. <laughs> for body count, for body count, the body count, yeah. We don't even play out. We just practice religiously. So we just make music because we love it. I think when skateboarding died for that period, that's when he was like going more into the music and art, but he kept skating while it was going on. Band shots. So that's me back in, when I was a kid. That's probably like 82. There's like Cap. His band and my band kind of play together quite a bit. He's pointed out things in me that I didn't realize. Like there's times like if I'm in a lull or if I'm going through a weird thing with my personal life, he points it out and says, it's because you're not creating, bro. Yeah. It's because you're not doing stuff. I get the same fucking way. You know, if we're not making something, we're not happy. And I'm like, you're right, you know? And you know, the other cool thing about Salvo, he's still so underground. He's still in the garage, cutting stencils. We're like, I made a thing of Jay Adams when he died. And this is a photo his, his dad, Kent Sherwood, made of Jay when he was a kid, back when he was six. Then I made a stencil out of it. And this is found art. This shit was from a backyard pool. Just trying to be creative. like. I'm always out here doing something. And I always, always admired him. He was into music. He was turning us all, all his youngsters into, onto the punk rock scene. And... This photo here is kind of cool. That's one of the last words I ever wrote a pipeline. Just hanging up right there. Hooker headers used to make yeah. skateboards. I did fake your rock with hooker board. But they were like a car manifest. They made headers for fucking dragsters. And my dad worked there for years. And so in the 70s, Skating was like a, a big fad. They wanted to jump in it. I got this board probably in 75. Well, the cool thing too is when you look at this, they didn't have grip tape. So they put coffee grounds and resin over it. Which it was kind of grippy at first, but when you feel it now, it's almost kind of slippery. They were on the right track. And so looking back, these kind of skateboards really, you know, kind of harness that feeling of gliding in the street and being free, you know what I mean? When you're a kid and you're 12 and 13, 11, you're trying to find your own way. There's no feeling like it in the entire world. So this is an old Kryptonic skateboard. So when I went pro, I went to Colorado to Boulder and they handed me this board and said, Steve, we're gonna give you a model board and here it is. Boom. And so they handed this board to me and I looked at him and I go, I can't ride that. And they were so bummed that I told them that. Like, what? what? We, just, we just put a, your name on a board. Like, it's an honor. I'm going, I can't ride this piece of shit. This thing's junk. I can't ride a P-Tex board. They're going to break. I go, I refuse it. And they didn't like that at all. Why would it break? It was, it's it's fucking made out of ski, ski material, P-Tex, like a ski. These guys were made, they were a ski company made these boards. You know what I mean? I set it up and rode it once. This is 78. I mean, I've been offered like five grand for this board, but I never sold it. It's the first board I ever had. I'm, like, I'm not gonna fucking sell a board with your first name on it. They couldn't put my whole name on the board, Steve Alba. So they put S Alba. And that's how my Salba nickname actually happened was from that. But I think he only put S Alba because he saw me fucking put this here. And then when I went for Santa Cruz, they just used Salba also because the people in the skateboard board kind of knew me as Salba, so it kind of stuck. His bevel board was just that type of board that at one point, almost everyone had it. Well, I think people loved it or hated it at first. It was, I mean, I, I think if you go back, it's probably closer to what we actually ride now. That's not the original. This is probably like the third version. When they did this bevel reissue, Pomarda called me and asked me to send him this board up. Inspect it to make this board. So this board was made from this board. He literally digitized it and matched the concave exactly. It's funny, there were so many guys that claimed that, you know, I had one of these boards and it was, it was, it was way steeper than this. You guys didn't do it, you know, like, it was exactly the same.
he, he does stretch. Yeah. He does take care of himself. I don't know if he does. He eats bean burritos. <laughs> <laughs> he rides his bike too. I really don't know. He just keeps going. All right, let's go. I think any advice for anybody for like, if you want to try to skate as long as you can, you got to be physically fit. You have to be in good shape and, and take care of yourself. Whether you're doing yoga, riding a bike, or, or whatever you're doing outside of skateboarding, you know, kind of make yourself stronger. I'm up here riding in the mountains, dirt bike or something. I'm ripping down the trail, and there's Salvo on his mountain bike, just right. rolling. Well, what's up, bro? And so, hey, bro. And he's like complimenting me. He's like, yeah, bro. Getting it, getting out, you're getting, doing something that cool. And I'm like, you're fucking nuts, dude. Did you ride that bike all the way up here? Man, you know, not everybody's like that, you know? Yeah, he's just got that champion mentality and that's, that's why he's where he is. Consistency, he just doesn't quit. That's really what I learned through all those years is that as long as you, stay active and you can, don't take long breaks or you know that that's when it gets really hard to get back to it back at pipeline i met this guy named bill door back when i was probably like i was in my 20s probably like 24 and when i met the dude he's like he was just learning how to skate at 55. I remember going home that night and told my mom, I met this guy today at Pipeline Mom, his name's Bill Doher, he's 55, and he's a doctor, and he's just trying to learn how to skate. And I kind of helped him go down the stuff, and he's awesome. And I hope I can do that when I get that old. And so, I mean, he's, he's passed away now, but the dude really made a big impression on me. There's hundreds of people in this neighborhood that love Salvo, and they look up to him so much. Oh, I mean, yeah. li literally. He was like, what put Upland on the map, you know? I can only imagine he's been that influence to thousands and thousands of people. I'm super driven, I always have been. I'm always looking for the next adventure. And it's, it's even traveling to go into these zones where I go, I mean, let's put it this way, most people don't want to go spend their day in San Bernardino, but I go do that. It's like a magnet. It's like calling my name, come have fun in my zone. A good week is I go to the gym Monday, and then I'll ride the bike Tuesday for two hours, 15, 14 miles uphill, and Wednesday I skate, then Thursday I can do yoga with Julie at night, sometimes I'll surf in the morning. Well, even now at 60, he gets really grumpy if he doesn't skate. And he lets you know, I haven't skated in five days. I haven't skated in seven days. I always skate Fridays. That's a, that's a given. And then sometimes Saturday is either surf day with Jules or Sunday skate day. It just depends. So that's a good week. My mom, if I was ever in the paper, me or Mickey, they'd always cut the photos out. That's from the first pipeline contest. Here's me and Mickey doing doubles. And back in the good old days, when they had doubles contests, which they don't really do too much in today's world, every time they had a contest at Pipeline Skate Park, we had a party at my house. From 1978 all the way to the park closed in 1988. Here's Fausto Patella from Independent and his wife Gwen. I've always considered Fausto my second dad. Always gave me advice and kind of steered me in the right direction. Me and Mickey, 1979, October 12th, contract from Kryptonics. So my mom went to Kryptonics and said, if you're gonna have my son skate for you, you have to give him photo incentives and contest incentives. If my son does good in a contest, you need to match his winnings and I don't know why she went to bat with me like this, but she did. When we got done talking to them, they all kind of said no. I mean, my mom got up from the table and started walking out like this. Okay, see you later, bye, we're going back to California. And they said, hold on, hold on, hold on. And they got us back at the table and they basically agreed to what my mom said. So no one knows this, I'm the fucking guy in skateboarding that made a fucking photo incentives. 
My mom did it for me to 1979, 1980. I got to imagine that there's a lot of pools he rides because I've ridden a lot with him that I'm like, I, you're not having fun in here. There's no way you're having fun in this thing. Some guys like want to progress trick wise. I'm going to do this flip or I'm going to do that. That's cool and I get that. And my forte is skating something new. I've never skated. I mean, all that stuff that goes into that to make that work. Are you kidding me? Like, like just getting to the top is fun? There's terrible. There's a lot of terrible backyard pools. Here's a cool photo of me and Jesse when I was Mr. Mom. What are you doing? I don't know. I gotta go. I gotta go home and vacuum, clean the house, and like he was the one staying home, and he had the wife working, you know, and he was living the dream, being the skater, yep. and taking care of the house because that's what you do. When your kids are born, you see that shit. There's nothing like that on earth. It is the most craziest, coolest, emotional thing you ever experience, man. And when your little kid touches your finger for the first time, it's, I'm almost crying now. It <laughs> melts your fucking heart. And at that point, like, then like, hey, all those doubts and like, all my life's over, all that shit went out the fucking door. You know what I mean? Like, dude, my child's here. I'm like, yes, what can I do to make this rad? <laughs> hey, my name's Jesse Alba. Um, Steve Alba's kid. And here to talk some shit about him. <laughs> Having him as a dad was pretty, a pretty fun time. It was like more of a friend, I'd say, than a dad. It's like very supportive of whatever me and my little brother wanted to do. Oh, that was it, kid. It's a weird pump. It's what's called an elliptical pump. That's why it's kind of weird. He would take me skating with him. Like, he told me since I was at least one years old. If I wanted to go skate, I had to take the kids with me. He would take them to permission pools or skate parks. Cause he'd have a setup. He had his, he had the playpen. There's one that he told me where they got a gun pulled on them at this barge somewhere at some apartment complex. I was probably way too young to be there. I don't even remember, but. Yeah. This mic is so small. <laughs> where I took him as a little baby. So he went to this pool off the 105. And it was a three tiered apartment building and the pool was on the bottom floor. And we were skating and a dude from the second floor came over the handrail and he said, hey, you're making noise, stop skating, get the fuck out of here. And he comes down into the pool zone, right in front of the pool gate. And I don't think he even saw him, because he, he was on the stair. But he's looking down, he just sees a skating, you know what I mean? And he pulls up his fucking shirt, and he had a nine millimeter. And then we just, oh shit. And then we just like, <laughs> grabbed him, and like, later. And I didn't tell Julie, because she would've got super upset. I didn't tell her until 20 years later. 20 years later. <laughs> Basically, you know what I mean? I kind of didn't really care about skating from like, probably when I was eight till I turned 12. He, he never like pushed me to do it or anything. It was kind of more just there. And then after that, in junior high school, like there's a group of kids that skated. And then since then, that's like all I've been doing. He's kind of a, a legend in, in our town where we grew up. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty, or at least he thinks he is maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> he is for sure though. He stayed playing jazz when everyone moved on to something else. And then when people came and got older, they were like, oh, jazz is kind of cool. Oh, and there's that guy still playing jazz. In all honesty, like I loved skating pools as a kid, but I loved skating pools that were meant for skating. I didn't like going to some janky kinked pool just to get a crail slide, you know what I mean? Like, I would rather not struggle to do tricks I take for granted. Being 60 years old and 180 pounds, smashing into a shallow end actually is not fun. I'm not sure if he's being truthful on that. <laughs> <laughs> but he must love the challenge. And so there is that thing like, if I could just get a grind here and hear my truck bark, that's fun. Everybody just wants to come to Cali and live that dream of of not skating the skate park. Let's go skate something rad. Let's go skate a backyard pool. Go skate Baldy Pipe. Let's go. I'll be the tour guide. And I like doing that shit. And a lot of guys would start skating with me in the 90s. Started calling, what calling this whole like zone Salba land. We're going to Salba land. I'm going to hang out with Salba. You know what I mean? So that was kind of a funny thing for a while where 
You know, it wasn't even the Badlands anymore, it was, it was Salvo Land. <laughs> you know what I mean? I always kind of say like, Fontana, Rialto, San Bernardino, Colton, have always been like our areas of operations. We always try to have like at least three or four or five pools like on hand, whether they're finishing the barges. Here, right now, just this pool right here, we've skated probably 20 years ago. I was cruising the neighborhood again the other day, and again, I have all these pens on my phone from shit I remember, and I can see this pool was empty from the fence. Hello? The coats were in the ice box. You never know. Sometimes they call you back, sometimes they don't. The lights are on upstairs, though. I think maybe someone's home. Who knows? I get it, you know, you're coming to the house to kind of skate the pool and you're knocking at the door and they see you look a little intimidating. You know, neighbors are pulling a gun in you, the homeowners pull a gun in you, the, the gangbangers are pulling a gun in you, or worse yet, the cops are pulling a gun on you. We've been busted by helicopters skating the pool plenty of times, especially around here in Rialto. I wonder if there's no caller ID as I keep calling back. Listen, I don't know who you are and I don't appreciate you coming to my house and taking pictures. Now, if you do not want me to call the cops on you, you need to stop invading my privacy. I have your driver's, your license number, and I have the type of car you drive, and I have you on video. I need you to stop Sally from the alley. <laughs> I've had this happen so many times through the years, like what? Please call me, what were you doing? I'm looking for a pool. Look, you can see my shit, I'm like, fuck, you know? So that's the thing, when they, they actually look me up, they know what I do, it's pretty damn obvious, so. Again, it's not, not too concerning. At one point, as a brand, we didn't want to rely on reissues. We didn't want to rely on the past. We we're trying to become, you know, current, right? But at the same time, we ignored kind of the, the past, I think, for a bit. And um, once we realized, hey, let's celebrate this. And then we created the Veterans Division which is when Salva came back in the fold and Knox, I think, was in there and dressing maybe around that same time. And it was a oversight to not have that in the mix, you know? It was just like, it was a mistake. I can't imagine it, Salva not being a part of the brand. He is Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is he, so stoked to have him in the fold and even more so to see him still skating at the level that he's skating. I don't know how far will Steve take it. All the ones that are coming up behind him are eagerly waiting to find out because I feel like that's that's going to be our our projected limit. Steve will go as long as he wants. Yeah, as long as he enjoys it. As long as his body lets him. He's pretty hell-bent to keep skating, I feel like. Yeah. Not even for anyone else but himself, either. It's just like something he likes to do. Yeah. Pretty awesome. He's never going to quit. He's never going to stop. He's like having a 15-year-old. Nobody wants to play with me. <laughs> He's not going to stop. I talk to him every He's day. He's afraid of stopping. I could probably skate at 70 already. I was like 10 years away and probably carve and grind. But I'm not quitting yet. I mean, I'm not going to quit because I can't walk, to be honest with you. I love it so much. Dude never misses a beat. I want to be him when I grow up. 